Over the past few years, we've seen increasing amounts of scientific research that have been looking at the pet-human bond and evidence supporting the positive impacts that dogs and cats can have on human development and on their health. In some parts of the world, like Japan, there are reported to be more dogs and cats than there are children. Researchers have found that being responsible for a pet in childhood may positively influence concern for others when older, and there is a suggestion that pet-owning children grow up to become much more responsible adults. It's clear that for many people, family pets provide comfort and companionship to children as they go through the challenges of growing up, and they also influence our children to lead much healthier lifestyles. Dog-owning children have been shown to spend 11 minutes more per day active than those who have no dog. For adults, the story can be very positive. For example, being the owner of a dog or a cat may even boost your attractiveness. In a UK poll, 82% of women agreed that they are much more attracted to men who like animals and 90% of single women said that a man who owned a cat was considered to be much nicer than other guys. Looking at the health research, we find that owning a pet can potentially lead to a happier, healthier lifestyle. Researchers have published papers showing that cat or dog owners are less likely to suffer from depression than those without pets. They're much more relaxed, they have lower blood pressure in stressful situations when their pet is with them, they make fewer visits to the doctors when they're over 65, experience lower cholesterol and have higher levels of naturally releasing mood enhancing chemicals such as serotonin and dopamine in their systems. So far, things all seem very positive for our furry friends. But before we get carried away, we need to recognise that there is a darker side to the story. Injuries caused by direct interaction with dogs and cats can be very dangerous, particularly where children are concerned, and disease transfer from living near to populations of free-roaming dogs and cats is considered a serious public health risk in many parts of the world. The World Health Organization reports that sadly the dog, who is normally man's best friend in many parts of the world, is also the source of the vast majority of human rabies deaths, contributing up to 99% of all rabies transmissions to humans. Infection as a result of being bitten from an infected dog causes tens of thousands of deaths every year, mostly in Asia and Africa in poorer communities where dogs and humans live closely together. Even more worrying is that 40% of people who are bitten by suspect rabid animals are children under 15 years of age. Suffice to say that there's been a lot of research into the factors associated with dog-human aggression and effective prevention methods. Responsible dog owners recognise that whilst most dogs are extremely tolerant, there are some dogs that find the unpredictable behaviour of children difficult to cope with and they will try to defend themselves if they can't escape from the unwanted attention of the children in the family. Common sense tells us that children should never be left alone with a pet animal and where pets and children live closely together, parents should always be mindful of the need to educate their family about animal needs and their behaviour so as to avoid any potential risks due to misunderstandings. I think it's fair to say that the relationship between humans and their dogs and cats is a complex one. Dogs and cats are valued as companions and have a positive influence on their owner's health and happiness. They're welcomed into many homes throughout the world and for some people they're as highly valued as any member of the family. Yet in the same society there are increasingly numbers of abandoned, neglected or badly treated pets leading to a rise in the number of animal welfare organisations who are left to deal with the problem of this throwaway culture. In other parts of the world, these same species are often viewed as potential public health risks and where the risk of dangerous zoonotic diseases is greatest, these animals are often feared, banished from the community, treated cruelly and sometimes even killed inhumanely. In order to understand the complexities of the relationship we have with our dogs and cats, we need to appreciate the different views that exist around the world. And we need, much more importantly, to try to see the world through these animals' eyes.